Welcome to This Week in Algebra, Hartford Union High School students. Today we are going to learn for solving for y. So what is the purpose of solving for y? What we want to do is we want to get each one of these equations in slope-intercept form. And if you remember, slope-intercept form is our y equals mx plus b. Now hopefully this is review for a lot of you because we worked with it a little bit last week. And I'm sure you have worked with it over your algebra or other math careers as well. The M stands for the slope, and the B stands for your y-intercept. So now, how do you actually solve for y? The first thing that you want to do is you want to undo addition and subtraction. So when we undo addition and subtraction, the main thing that we have to remember, we cannot forget this, is that we have to only combine like terms. And you will see that when we get to some examples. The next step is then you have to undo our multiplication and division. So with multiplication and division, make sure that everything is being multiplied or divide. Don't forget all of your terms. So now let's get into some examples. I know you guys are itching to do some examples here. first one that you see up here is a 2x plus a y that is equal to 16. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to underline our y so we know that that's what we have to get all by itself. So then what else do you see on the same side of the y? You should see that 2x. We want to undo it, so let's subtract 2x from both sides of the equation. On the left-hand side, all we have left now is our y. On the other side, we can combine our like terms, which hopefully you see, you can't combine those. So we have a negative 2x plus 16, and we are simply done with that problem because our y is by itself. So on to number 2, 4x minus 4y is equal to 32. Same thing, we underline our y, so we still have another term that is on the same side as the y. So we need to subtract a 4x from both sides of our equation. Now when we bring this down, do not forget that minus sign in front of our 4y. Then we have equals, and again, we cannot combine any like terms. So you have a negative 4x plus 32. So this is where one where we need to do our next step. We need to undo multiplication or division. So the negative 4 and the y are being multiplied. So we have to divide every term by a negative 4. So when you divide the left side, all you end up with is a regular y. You end up with an equals a positive 1x, which you don't need to write the 1. And then a 32 divided by a negative 4 gives you a negative 8. And your y is all by itself. So those two were pretty easy. I know every single person was able to do those two. So let's get some more challenging ones here. Now you're going to see that the y is actually on the other side of our equation. But we always need to look at, we underline our y, and what is on the same side as our y right now. It's a positive 5. How do we get rid of a positive 5 to the other side? We subtract 5. So now on that left side, we have a 2x minus our 5. That equals our 3y. Now, some of you may not like that the y is on the right side. That's okay for right now. We'll write it like our normal slope-intercept form once we get to the end. But now, we have to divide each term, every single term, by a 3. So what you're going to notice here is it doesn't work out nice. We have a 2 divided by a 3. We keep it as a fraction because that is our slope. We have a negative 5 divided by 3. We can keep that as a fraction. And we have it equal to our y. So now our y is all by itself, so we can now flip our equation so our y is on the left side, and we copy the other side down exactly the way that we saw it to begin with. And now if you notice, the last two lines there are the exact same equation, just written in two different ways. Okay? Number four, a 3x minus a y minus a 9. Now every single term is on the same side of our equation right now, so we can choose which one we want to get away from y. Well, if it makes more sense, why don't we just try to move y first? We have a negative 1y. We want to get that y to the other side of the equation. So let's add a 1y to both sides. So we have left a 3x minus a 9 is equal to a y. We can get rid of the 1y because it means the exact same thing. So now we can switch our equation around so we have our y that's equal to a 3x minus a 9. Last little bit here, okay? When we originally talked about our equations and when we have lines, not every single line that we graph is going to be a diagonal line. We may have horizontal or vertical lines as well. 
So when you see a y plus a 5, we have to get that rid of that 5. So we subtract 5 to both sides. So we have a y that is equal to a negative 5. So now, what kind of line is this? This is a horizontal line. What kind of slope does a horizontal line have? I can hear your answers ringing through this, my headphones right now. This has a zero slope. That is a perfect equation for our line, y equals a negative 5. So now with our other example, we have a 3 minus an x that's equal to a 7. Well, again, what do we want to do? We want to get rid of whatever is on the same side as our x. But if you notice, there's no y. So this should hopefully be a dead giveaway as to what type of equation we're going to have. That already tells us that we are going to have a vertical line. And we know every single vertical line has an undefined slope. So what we want to do is we're going to subtract 3 from both sides of our equation. And remember to bring that negative sign down. So we have a negative x that's equal to 7 minus 3 is a 4. And then we have actually a negative 1 that's in front of that x. We need to divide both sides by a negative 1. And our equation ends up being an x that is equal to a negative 4, which is a vertical line. Thank you for listening to the HUHS Hartford Teachers Algebra 1 page. Have a great rest of your day.